Well, today is a homecoming celebration. And all of us are delighted to see Lieutenant Robert Goodman free, safe, and reunited with his family. This young naval officer was flying a mission of peace, and both during and after, he exemplified qualities of leadership and loyalty, qualities of so many fine men and women in our military that we're all proud of. Reverend Jackson's mission was a personal mission of mercy, and he has earned our gratitude and our admiration. Lieutenant Goodman's release affords us a unique opportunity to, well, I took advantage of the opportunity to write to President of Syria and call for Syrian cooperation in securing peace in Lebanon. Last night, Don Rumsfeld left to seek diplomatic solutions to the problems of the region. And today, on this happy occasion, let all of us unite in a renewed determination to achieve a lasting stability and the withdrawal of all foreign forces from Lebanon. As I say, this is a homecoming and a very welcome and a happy one here. Thank you all for recording it for posterity. And welcome home. Thank you, sir. Thank you. I would just like to uh, once again thank uh, all the people involved, uh, Reverend Jackson, uh, Ambassador Paganelli, the ministers and his delegation uh, for their diligent work and uh, the ability to get me home a little bit uh, earlier than I had, that I had uh, envisioned. Thank you very much and I appreciate all the support. Let me express thanks to the ecumenical body of ministers led by uh, Dr. Howard, who took this risky mission of mercy on faith. I want to express thanks to the Goodman family, Mrs. Marilyn Goodman and Bob and Terry, who prayed with us and gave us so much moral support and gave us the necessary inspiration. To the people around this nation who wore their blue ribbons as a measure of solidarity as we prayed together and fasted together, uh, trying to rise above the everydayness of our lives that we might be able to secure the release of Lieutenant Robert Goodman and to gain his freedom and have a breakthrough for peace. We want to thank Almighty God who heard our sincere and earnest prayers during this hour of crisis and this hour of opportunity. It was especially meaningful to us that once we got our uh, telegram back from uh, President Assad, we then called Senator Charles Percy, chairman of our Foreign Relations Committee, which we thought was the appropriate thing to do. He then got us in contact with the State Department, uh, Ambassador Murphy and Mr. Lawrence Eagleburger. It was the support of our State Department within the law that gave us the latitude that we needed to feel that we were doing the right thing within the law. The fact that we left this country and the uh, ambassador from Syria, uh, Rafiq Jujati, escorted us to the airport. And when we arrived in Damascus, Syria, Ambassador uh, Paganelli uh, met us there. It meant that we were without the portfolio of either government, but with the uh, respect of both of them. President Reagan had the option to, to stop our mission. He had the option to interfere or to intervene. Uh, he did neither. And we felt that the fact that he made the choice to not intervene or interfere was significant to us. The fact that Ambassador Paganelli met us in, in Syria was a signal that our government uh, had uh, reasonable doubt because missions like this are not that uh, successful often. But that was all that we needed was the reasonable assurance and the support. Uh, I would hope that the cycle of pain is now broken and that this mission of peace will take us to an everlasting peace. Lastly, it is significant that we were in uh, Damascus. For one reason that many of us identify with Damascus is that a man traveling along that road many years ago fell off of a horse and was knocked unconscious. When he awakened, he saw a new light. It was the Apostle Paul. And because he saw that new light, the world has never been the same since. As it were, December of this past year, Lieutenant Robert Goodman was knocked from a plane and knocked unconscious. The Syrians had the right to kill him. They did not. 
to nourish him back to good health. And in due time, they released him. And thus we see another light on this day. President Assad used this opportunity to seize an initiative. And we want to express our thanks to him. The fact that President Reagan has already sent him a letter is a sign that when the minds of leaders come together and their hearts agree that we do have the capacity to save this generation from disaster. Thank you very much.